This is Fair Issues on the Mormon Faircast. This week's article is entitled, Reformed Egyptian and Evidence for Book of Mormon, by Michael R. Ash, read by Stephen Densley, Jr. This and other articles by Michael Ash can be found at DeseretNews.com. This article was used by permission of the author and the Deseret News. One of the few things upon which believers and critics agree is that Joseph Smith could not read ancient languages, at least in the typical sense. The Book of Mormon was not translated by the same method as scholars who, conversant in two different languages, translate ancient texts. When Nephi began his record, he said, I make a record in the language of my father, which consists of the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. A thousand years later, the prophet Moroni told us that the Nephite record was written in the characters which are called among us the Reformed Egyptian, being handed down and altered by us according to our manner of speech. This script, he explained, was more abbreviated than Hebrew, and it was unique to the Nephites, altered according to their language and unknown to anyone else. The critics, however, assure us that, one, good Israelites would not have written in pagan Egyptian, two, there is no such thing as Reformed Egyptian, and three, there should be evidence of Hebrew language in the ancient world. First, would a devout Israelite have written in Egyptian? We now know from archaeological evidence that some Hebrew and Aramaic texts, languages used by the Israelites in Lehi's time, were written in Egyptian characters, sometimes even in modified Egyptian characters. The translation of some ancient Egyptian documents, such as Papyrus Amherst 63, had eluded scholars until they realized that while the characters were Egyptian, the underlying text was Aramaic. Second, is Reformed Egyptian a fictional script? It's important to note that Reformed is an adjective synonymous with altered or modified. Reformed Egyptian was the unique name given to the script by the Nephites. We wouldn't expect other people to use the exact same term. Likewise, the scholarly terms cuneiform and hieroglyphics are modern non-Egyptian designators for scripts from ancient Mesopotamia and Egypt. Neither the Mesopotamians nor the Egyptians used such terms for their script, but this does not lead to conclude that these people or their writing didn't exist. As a side note, we find an interesting detail in early Mormon W. W. Phelps's account of Martin Harris's visit to New York scholar Charles Anthon. Harris took a written sample of the Book of Mormon text to confirm that it was real before investing his funds into Joseph Smith's plan to publish the record. Harris said that Anthon thought it was real, but changed his mind when Harris told him that the plates were delivered by an angel. Harris came home convinced that Joseph had a real ancient record and assisted Joseph in the translation. According to Phelps, Anthon told Harris that the characters were an example of shorthand Egyptian. This unique phrase wouldn't have been part of Phelps's or Harris's vernacular, but it was a distinct scholarly expression used by those who were acquainted with different Egyptian cursive scripts, such as hieratic. It seems likely that Anthon, as Harris claimed, recognized that these characters resembled some sort of modified Egyptian script, although he wouldn't have been able to read. Evidence also demonstrates that other scripts in the ancient world were modified according to the material upon which they were written, and today we know of a number of reformed, or modified, or altered Egyptian scripts. During Lehi's day, in fact, Hieratic and Demotic were examples of actual reformed cursive Egyptian scripts. Third, why is there no evidence for the Hebrew language in ancient America? There are two answers to this question. A. We know from Moroni that through the years, their Hebrew language had undergone changes. Language typically changes over the centuries, and it's likely that the Lehites, as a small incursion into an existing Native American population, would have adopted the language of their hosts. Many scholars think that there is no reason we should ever expect to find Hebrew in the ancient New World. B. Other scholars, especially professional linguist Dr. Brian Stubbs, believe that there is growing evidence for traces of Hebrew in many New World languages. As a professional, Stubbs avoids the pitfalls of amateurs who simply spot instances where two languages have similar words and similar meanings. Stubbs has been able to show the advanced parallels that linguists look for when identifying related languages. 
At least one non-LDS Rhodes scholar and professional linguist has expressed a favorable opinion about Stubbs' ongoing research. The Book of Mormon's Reformed Egyptian fits neatly into what is currently known about ancient history and the modification of Egyptian texts. In the next installment, we'll examine the translating aids utilized by the prophet. If you like this podcast, you can help promote it by rating it in iTunes and by writing a review. Post a link on your blog and Facebook page and tell your friends about us. Questions or comments about this episode can be sent to podcast at fairlds.org or join the conversation at fairblog.org. Michael R. Ash is the author of the book Shaken Faith Syndrome, Strengthening One's Testimony in the Face of Criticism and Doubt, as well as the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Both books are available for purchase online through the Fair Bookstore. Music for this episode was provided courtesy of Lawrence Green. The opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or a fair. Thank you.